In 63 BC, Emperor Augustus was born at one of the important turning points in history and among important historical figures. Of course, when he was born his name was not Augustus, and he was not born as the heir of an emperor, because the Roman Republic had not yet collapsed and the Roman Empire had not been established. The important turning point in history was still a few years away, and in this process Augustus had to grow up and learn to survive against important historical figures in the collapsing Roman Republic. The first important figure Augustus encountered was none other than Julius Caesar, the most powerful man in Rome, and his great uncle. But the boy's mother, Caesar's nephew, did her best to keep young Octavian away from his famous relative. Caesar apparently had little interest in the young boy, who grew up in seclusion in his family's country villa, far from the political intrigues of the dying republic. Octavian did not exhibit the excellent qualities of an ideal military commander, as expected of an aristocrat in the late republic. However, he had a certain quality that would eventually lead the boy to the imperial throne. Unlimited ambition, political intelligence and a clear mind. Despite his mother's opposition, Octavian was determined to enter Rome's political arena and join Caesar's inner circle. In 46 BC, his mother allowed Caesar to go to Hispania, where he planned to fight Pompey's forces. But Octavius was unable to join the journey because he fell ill. When he recovered, he set sail for the front, but was shipwrecked. He went ashore with a handful of his friends and, to the admiration of his great uncle, passed through the middle of enemy territory and arrived at Caesar's camp. Filius Paterculus reports that after this incident, Caesar allowed young Octavian to accompany him in his chariot. After returning to Rome, Caesar left a will to the Vestal Virgins, naming Octavius as his first heir. Octavius still lacked the skills of a good general, so his great uncle Caesar sent him to train at a military camp in Albania. While Octavius was in the camp, the first breaking point in Octavius's life occurred. Julius Caesar was assassinated in the Senate. Hearing of his great uncle's violent end, Octavian was left with few options. He could remain in the safety of the military camp, or go to Rome and fight to maintain his political status. It was here, in Apollonia, that the young man made his first important choice. Octavian heeded the advice of his best friend Agrippa and set out for Rome. On the way, he discovered that Caesar had adopted him as his son and heir. With his great uncle's legacy and Agrippa's help, Octavian won the support of Caesar's senior troops and loyalists. The Second Triumvirate was a political alliance formed by three of the most powerful men in Rome after the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BCE. They were Octavian, Caesar's adopted son and heir, Antony, Caesar's loyal friend and general, and Lepidus, Caesar's former deputy and chief priest. The Triumvirs agreed to share the power and authority over the Roman Republic and to pursue and punish the conspirators who killed Caesar. The Second Triumvirate was established by a law called the Lex Titia, which gave the Triumvirs absolute power to make or repeal laws, appoint magistrates, and issue judicial sentences without any appeal or due process. The law also divided the Roman provinces among the three men. Antony took the East, Octavian the West, and Lepidus Africa. The Triumvirs also launched a campaign of proscription, which was a list of enemies who were declared outlaws and could be killed or confiscated by anyone. The proscription targeted many senators and equestrians who opposed or threatened the Triumvirs' interests. The second Triumvirate was dissolved by a series of conflicts and rivalries among the three men. The first sign of trouble was when Octavian forced Lepidus to retire from the Triumvirate in 36 BCE, after accusing him of trying to usurp his power in Sicily. Lepidus was stripped of his provinces and titles and was exiled to a small island. Octavian then became the sole ruler of the western provinces. The second and final conflict was between Octavian and Antony, who had become increasingly estranged over their political and personal differences. Antony had allied himself with Cleopatra, the Queen of Egypt, and had adopted a more eastern lifestyle and culture. He also planned to transfer some of his provinces to his children with Cleopatra, which angered many Romans who saw it as a betrayal of their interests. Octavian accused Antony of being disloyal to Rome and declared war on him in 32 BCE. 
The war ended with the decisive naval battle of Actium in 31 BCE, where Octavian's fleet defeated Antony's and Cleopatra's. Antony and Cleopatra fled to Egypt, where they committed suicide in 30 BCE. Octavian then annexed Egypt as a Roman province and became the undisputed master of the Roman world. The second triumvirate was the last attempt to restore the Roman Republic, but it failed because of the personal ambitions and conflicts of its members. It paved the way for the end of the Republic and the rise of the Empire under Octavian, who later took the name Augustus and became Rome's first emperor. Meanwhile, the relations between the two remaining triumviri, Octavian and Mark Antony, began to deteriorate. Despite being married to Octavia, Octavian's sister, Antony lived in Alexandria, not hiding his relationship with Cleopatra, the queen of Ptolemaic Egypt. To say that Octavian was infuriated by Antony's behavior would be an understatement. The situation worsened after Mark Antony publicly legitimized Cleopatra's son Caesarion as the true heir of Julius Caesar. For Octavian, who was only adopted, the legitimization of Caesar's biological son was a grave threat. Octavius, later known as Augustus, was the adopted son and heir of Julius Caesar. He benefited from the relationship between Marcus Antonius and Cleopatra in several ways. He used it as a pretext to wage war against Antony and Cleopatra, portraying them as enemies of Rome and himself as the defender of the Republic. He accused Antony of being corrupted by Cleopatra, of giving away Roman territories to her and her children, and of planning to make Caesarion the son of Caesar and Cleopatra his successor. He exploited the propaganda war to gain the support of the Roman Senate, the people, and the army. He presented Antony as a traitor who had abandoned his wife Octavia, Octavius's sister, for a foreign queen. He also claimed that he had obtained Antony's will, which revealed his intentions to move the capital to Alexandria and to be buried with Cleopatra. He defeated Antony and Cleopatra in the decisive naval battle of Actium in 31 BCE which ended the civil war and secured his sole rule over the Roman world. He pursued them to Egypt, where they committed suicide. He annexed Egypt as a province and took Caesarion as a prisoner. He later executed him, eliminating the last threat to his claim as Caesar's heir. Octavius thus emerged as the victor of the civil war and the founder of the Roman Empire. He changed his name to Augustus and became the first Roman emperor. He used his victory at Actium as a symbol of his restoration of peace, freedom, and stability to Rome. In the Roman eyes, this was tantamount to an act of treason, but the Senate was still reluctant to go to war. After all, half of the senators still supported Caesar's favorite general. Many of them departed to Alexandria. Despite the failure of his Parthian campaign, Antony still enjoyed the support of his troops. Always a cunning politician, Octavian blamed it all on Cleopatra, not Antony. The incoming conflict would be not between the two of them, but between virtuous Rome and decadent Egypt. It was a clever choice. The same year, the outraged Senate declared war on Cleopatra. The Battle of Actium was a naval battle that took place on 2nd September 31st BC in the Ionian Sea, near the promontory of Actium in Greece I. It was the climax of the civil war between Octavian, later known as Augustus, and Mark Antony, who were rival claimants to the leadership of the Roman Republic after the assassination of Julius Caesar in 44 BC. Octavian had a smaller but more agile fleet of about 400 ships, commanded by his loyal general Marcus Agrippa I. Antony had a larger but slower fleet of about 500 ships, mostly provided by his ally and lover, Cleopatra VII of Egypt. Antony also had a sizable army of about 70,000 infantry, but he decided to rely on his naval superiority and confront Octavian at sea. The battle lasted for several hours, with both sides exchanging volleys of arrows, stones, and fire. Antony's ships were heavily armored and equipped with towers and battering rams, but they were also less maneuverable and vulnerable to being surrounded by Octavian's lighter and faster ships. Agrippa used his superior tactics and coordination to exploit this weakness and inflict heavy losses on Antony's fleet. The turning point of the battle came when Cleopatra, who was watching the battle from a distance with 60 ships, decided to flee the scene and head for Egypt. 
Antony, seeing her departure, abandoned his flagship and followed her with a few loyal vessels. This caused a panic among his remaining forces, who either surrendered or were captured or destroyed by Octavian's ships. Octavian's victory at Actium gave him the complete control over the Roman world. He pursued Antony and Cleopatra to Egypt, where he defeated their last resistance at Alexandria in 30 BC1. Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide, leaving Octavian as the sole ruler of Rome. He later became the first Roman emperor, taking the name Augustus, and ushered in a period of peace and prosperity known as the Pax Romana.